Good afternoon. Please have your seats. <laughs> Take your seats. I'm so blessed to be here this afternoon. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for having me. <laughs> That's a warm welcome from City Church. I've heard so much about you guys and your faith and your, your praise and worship is just wonderful. Hi, where, where will I start? <laughs> I, think I, I think I should be here to, encur to be encouraged and not me to encourage you. <laughs> Oh, it's a wonderful day, isn't it? Look at me. My dear brothers and sisters, I am a living testimony of the goodness of God, of God's amazing grace, of His mercies that are really just so tender, but new every morning. I am a miracle of God. I am a walking miracle of God. No, some of the things that I went through, even just physically, you'd think, how is she able to manage to do all the things she's doing? Only by the grace of God. Only by the grace of God. I've had eight surgeries, including my three cesarean operations. Veterana sa surgery. At age 11, I had a tonsillectomy. At age 14, I had an appendectomy. And then I had my three cesareans. Or even before that, I had a cyst at my back that had to be operated on. And then in 1996, I was diagnosed to have malignant thyroid cancer. My kids were very young at that time. The youngest, if I'm not mistaken, was six. I mean, I don't want to do the computation right now, but about that time. And he was, his, his teacher told me that he was just always walking around the classroom. So I had to talk to him and sit him down and tell him, you know, ask him, oh, what's, what's wrong? What's the matter? And then he said, Mama, they said, you're sick. And then I said, yes, so do you know what I'm sick of? Do you understand? Yes. Cancer? He went like that. Then he looked at me, and then I said, do you know what cancer means? And he said, that you're going to die? And my heart broke. Even now as I recall it and see his face, I can see his face. All of a sudden, as he said that, his tears dropped. Then I just hugged him and said, but God can heal me, son. And guess what? Truly, God healed me. I did not go through chemotherapy. I didn't have to go even through radiation. It was a choice. I said, if I had radiation at that time, I would be separated from my children um, for about... I think two weeks. I'm not sure anymore at the exact time that I would be away from them. And I, don't, I, I couldn't bear thinking that I'd be away from my children, especially my youngest son, for two weeks because I knew it was really going to just freak him out. Okay, and what was the eighth surgery? My OB said I had two growths, each bigger than my uterus in my stomach. And so um, they did a total hysterectomy. So no more ovaries, no more <laughs> fallopian tubes, no more uterus, nothing. Even before I reached my menopause stage. <laughs> um, the surgery took more than six hours because they said that each growth was as hard as cement. And my oncologist had to scrape it off. So... Through the time, I was still, you know, working, working in between. I had to make a living because I had children, three children. But all through the time, the Lord was just sustaining me. The Lord's grace was sufficient. Truly, in our weakness, His strength is made perfect. So that's the physical aspect. How about the moral aspect of my life? It's okay, you can laugh at me. Now I can laugh about my life. I can laugh about the things, the crazy things, the unspeakable things, the shameful things I've done. Of course, when I was doing them, they were all in secret. But God is so merciful and so gracious that all through that time, I just found out that many people were praying for me, even fasting for me. And I just found out later on, even some fans, not just my friends, but even some of my fans, they would come to me, give me tracts, gift, gift me with Bibles, or write me little notes saying they're praying for me. And I appreciated the prayers, I appreciated the concern. 
But of course, I felt I already had a relationship with God. I knew God. I knew Jesus. I was doing my novenas. I would go to Baclaran. You know Baclaran? Every Wednesday, I was there. Not Wednesday daytime, but Tuesday going on to Wednesday because there are a lot of people there. So I have to go midnight or 2 a.m. I would even walk on my knees from the door onto the altar. I made all those sacrifices. Walking even from somewhere in Quezon City along, you know, White Plains to Antipolo every Good Friday. I would make all those sacrifices thinking that those would get me closer to God. Thinking that those sacrifices would make up for my sin and that God would not look at my sin if I made those sacrifices. But the thing is, before I do those sacrifices, and right after I do those sacrifices, I get right back into sin. It was like, not like, it was a bondage. I couldn't get out of it, and I did not know how to get out of it. I grew up with a religious mom who was the one who taught me how to pray, who was the one who taught me to do all the novenas. She even let me make, alam mo yung, alam mo sister, yung abito? She made me wear, since I was a little girl, a white dress with a blue sash, like an abito to the Our Lady of Lourdes. She promised that I will wear it until I get married. But the thing was, of course, when I was in my teens, when I'd go to church, I didn't want to wear that because I wanted to be fashionable on Sundays. So many things in my, in my life, but the wonderful thing is truly prayer changes everything. I'm a product of prayer. Fervent prayer, sincere prayers of my loved ones, my dear friends, who I would even mock. I don't know if you remember the late Helen Vela. She was like an ate-ate to me, to us actually, to Vilma and Vilma Santos and Tina. We were like a group of four that just shared our lives with each other, our secrets. Little did we know that Helen was already praying for us also. And Miss Tapia of School Bukul, yung mga kaedad ko, alam niyo yung School Bukul, di ba? She became very close to me. Um, it's just like a nanay-nanayan to many of us. So, she introduced me before to fortune telling. <laughs> she, she was the one who introduced me to all these idols and give me idols, you know, the one holding a money bags and, and all that stuff. She gave me all those. So, when, when she surrendered her life to Jesus, I became a burden to her. A burden, in a sense, is what I mean, a burden to pray for, to come to know Jesus also and surrender my life to Jesus. So she introduced me um, to eventually to prayer and fasting. But I'm going ahead of my story. When Helen, when Helen celebrated her birthday in 1989, she wrote me a note asking me to come to a gathering much like this one. And I said, ah, pumipili pa siya ng regalo. Bakit? Ayoko nga. But because I loved her, even if I sent my driver home, I just decided I'll drive myself. I'll drive myself to church. And when I got to the church, it's like her friends and uh, Miss Tapia also there, they were all just so, well, I'm not even say ecstatic. Maybe they were, but they were crying. Crying and, and just coming to me and saying, you know, matagal ka na namin pinagdadasal. Pinagdadasal namin na pumunta dito. Pinagdadasal ka na. Uh, Iyak sila na. Pagigil ako. Kakainis, di ba? Eto na nga. Dito na ako. Hello. And they sat me right there. First row. The first row. So, wow. Tapos meron, may part na gano'n na parang say hello to the... Yan, ganyan ka gaya ginawa ka dito. <laughs> say hello to the person to your left, to the person to your right, person in front of you, Whatever. So ako naman, nakaganito. So somebody will say, Welcome, Sister Connie. Welcome, Sister Connie. Welcome, Sister Connie. And then defensive. Defensive si Constancia. Kasi sinasabi ko, I'm here because it's Helen's birthday. Ah, oh, suplada. Ganun naman. I'm here because it's Helen's birthday. I'm here because Helen invited me. Tapos nag-preach na. Oh my. Alam niyo yung feeling? Ano bang pinagsasabi nitong nagpipreach na to? 
tinatamaan ako? Sinabi ni Helen lahat ng buhay ko? Or machismis ito, nanonood ng TV? Nanonood ng mga gossip shows? Alam ang buhay ko? Ganun ang feeling ko, di ba? How many of you know what I'm talking about? Ayun. Hindi ba nga? Eh di siyempre. Kikinig lang ako. And then, somebody came to testify. Just like what I'm doing right now. And he said, what he heard from the pastor being preached before, and he mentioned it. I was listening. I looked at him. Come to me. The Lord is saying, come to me, all you who are weary and heavily laden, and I will give you rest. I couldn't help it. I started crying, sweeping, because I was tired. So, so tired. Tired from all the problems. Tired of work. Tired of life. I was just coping, thinking of my three children. I attempted suicide a couple of times. One when I didn't have children. And at the time, when I already had my two older children, trying to drive off a cliff, and praise God, you know, I'd stop right there. Why? I would always say, Lord, I had a relationship with the Lord, di ba? Sabi ko nga. Lord, ayoko na talaga. Basta, ayoko na. Alam ko, if I drive off this cliff, okay lang, mamatay ako, okay lang, pumunta ako sa imperno, okay lang, okay lang. Ganyan pa. Alam ko naman, yung mga anak ko, you love my children, you're gonna take care of them and they'll go straight to you in heaven. That's what I used to tell God. But I'd always come to a screeching halt. Mapapabreaks ako and I'll stop. Like, there was a time, like, almost on the cliff. Kaya siguro yung mga anak ko, di ba, natuturuma na sa nanay nila? I'm sure it affected them. And yes, it had. Because I also had some problems and issues with the, um, some of, one of my children. So I'm like, you know, Lord, pagod na ako eh. Ayoko na. So I ran up, went in front, went down on the when I heard that verse, come to me all you are weary and heavily laden, I will give you rest. I raised my hands up and I said, Lord, I surrender. I surrender my life to you. Do with me what you want to do. Use me however you want to use me. And from that time on, it became kind of different, not overnight. But I had to make decisions like realizing that obedience is better than sacrifice. All the sacrifices I've made, but God just wanted obedience first. And then I realized, you know, one of the first verses that I memorized was Matthew 11.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and everything else He will add unto you. You can just imagine how, <clears throat> excuse me, how long it took me to memorize that verse. But I wanted it perfect. But that got me, start, that got me started. That, st that got me starting to memorize verses. It's so powerful. It's just different when you know the word. The enemy can't lie to you if you know God's word. That's the sword of the spirit and you wield it at him. But if you don't know the word of God, then how can you wield your sword? You don't have any sword to wield. And you don't know God's promises. You don't know his, his uh, word. And you don't know what to say to the enemy. Anyway... So, obedience is better than sacrifice. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Everything else will be added unto you. And on to Matthew 6, 34, which said, Do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. That helped me in my life because when I decided to follow Jesus and I, I turned my back from sin, it was so painful, it was so difficult, some people thought it was so easy for me to do, but it's not, that's not true. It was very hard. But I wanted to obey God. I wanted to obey Jesus. I wanted to follow Jesus. And I knew that because after I got married and had my two children, I got separated, I had my annulment, then I got into a relationship um, with a married man. And then I eventually had a son with this married man. My marriage was annulled, but his marriage wasn't annulled, even if he also eventually got separated. So it was sin. Ayoko na ng sin. I wanted to please God. I wanted to obey God. And so, with all the people praying for me, then I made a decision. A decision to obey 
to a, vision, a decision to turn my back from sin, I would cry every day. I would get so depressed. I would really just get so depressed, but then I just knew that's what the Lord wanted me to do. And I had this Yaya who was a Christian, and she would leave little notes beside my bed and, and on my night table. And I'll never forget one of the verses that she gave me when I was just saying, Manang, you know, she's an older lady, Manang, hihirapan ako, hindi ko kaya. One day she just put this note and said, in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation has seized you except what is common to man. But when you are tempted, God will always provide a way out for you to stand up under it. It ministered to me so much. It ministered to me. And I memorized it first. That's why I memorized, you know, the verses that really minister to me. That's why it's good you store them up like a bank in your heart because the Holy Spirit will remind you what the, the word that you read, the word that you memorized, the word that you know. God will memorize you through the power of His Holy Spirit. So when you need it, it's there. It's there for you to wield. So when I'm like, when I'm like getting really depressed and really getting down, I mean, I just go and say, no, no devil, I resist you. The Lord said, if I submit myself to Him and resist you, devil, you will flee. So flee in the name of Jesus. I submit myself to God. I resist the devil. It didn't say submit yourself to God and kind of resist the devil. I just say, oh devil, mamiana, bukas na lang. No, resist means to really just make a decision to just get away from it. Resist it. Ayaw mo. So I always say that aloud. The devil can't read your thoughts. Only God can. That's why you need to really say it out loud. Say out the verse, say out that word of God. So I say, submit, I submit myself to God. I resist you, devil. So go away, flee. It did not say flee. Tatakbo lang, aalis lang. Flee means kakaripa siya ng takbo. Matatakot din siya eh. Takot din siya, di ba? Man does not live by the, by the, man does not live by bread alone, but by the word, by the word of God that comes. Uh, what's that? I got it confused. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out from the mouth of God. There, I got it. Minsan kasi, di ba, palawin, kasi binibilisan. Kasi konti lang minutes ako dito. Kailangan apurahin ko na. Baka palayasin ako dito. For many things, and I just want to share them with you um, pretty fast. Yes, prayer changes everything. So I encourage all, or encourage all of you to pray at all times and not just when it's convenient. Pray for your loved ones. Pray for people at work. Pray for your friends. Pray for yourself. Pray. Just pray. Communicate with the Lord. Prayer doesn't always have to be in a kneeling posture. There are times we really need to get down on our knees, and that's great. I got down on my knees this morning because <laughs> I said, Lord, please be with me there in that meeting. I can't be with God. I can't be anywhere sharing what God has done in my life without really just getting down on my knees and asking God to really be with me. Because if God won't be with me, Lord, I na lang. Don't bring me there if you're not going to be with me. Help me, Lord, because I need you. I acknowledge I need you. I have nothing apart from you. I cannot do anything without God. Do you know that? My goodness, we can't even breathe without Him. Hello. So, pray, pray. Prayer is the greatest privilege that you and I have. Prayer is what's going to release the greatest power on earth. And there is such power in agreement in prayer. When two or more agree in prayer, it is done. When two or more gather in prayer, the Spirit of God is there. And so, can you imagine? And I, I just like to add, I don't know the exact verse. Sister Sheila, yung, yung verse about in First Peter. Um, I'm talking here about husbands and wives. Do you realize, husbands, if you're in agreement with your wife in prayer, you know, God's gonna, not, God, nothing is gonna hinder your prayers. God's going to answer your prayers. That's why, be in agreement. Love your wives and love your husbands. Para naman, alam ko yung sinasabi ko. Alam ko na. Kaya nasasabi ko na. Hindi ko alam yun nun eh. <laughs> Nothing will hinder your prayers. It says, wow. Can you imagine? God will really answer your prayers. Hello. Yan, kaya sabi nga ni Sister Sheila, talagang daw in agreement siya, supportive wife. O, oh, ba? Very good behind, behind the successful man is a, woman loving and praying oh you're the one on your knees always there are four things that i'd like to share with you i've learned this through reading reading books listening to podcasts listening to preachers that really helped me through the years 
And I have an acronym for it. It's CALM. C-A-L-M. Okay? And as I read them, as I, I share this with you, I just like to share the verses that ministered to me, the verses that might help you also in your walk with God. You might have your own, however God speaks to you. But this was so alive in my heart. This was really just so alive. I've learned to, number one, celebrate God's goodness. We need to celebrate God's goodness. Okay? In Ephesians, um, can you have that? The verse? How do you celebrate God's goodness? You just realize, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And it's not from yourselves, it's the gift of God. Not by works so that no one can boast. Kung hindi magyayabangan lang tayo, oh, ang dami kong ginawa para kay Lord, ah. Kaya ako sa heaven ako. Hindi ganun yun. We are saved by grace through faith. Isn't God so good? You don't have to do anything, you just have to accept Him. And what He did for you and me on the cross. When we ask for forgiveness, He will forgive. Isn't that so good of him? Grabe. I think I have another verse. Psalm 1071. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. It did not say his love will endure overnight. His love endures forever, ever, and ever, for all eternity. We need to remind ourselves this, and we need to declare, thank you, Lord, for you are good. Your love endures forever. Diba? Um, another one in Psalm 34, 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in Him. Of course, blessed is the man and the woman. <laughs> I know when you know that, diba? Right? So, number one is celebrating God's goodness. Number two, ask for God's help. I always ask for God's help. Parang anything, not just with the big things, not just with the difficult things, even in the minute things, the little, the little things. Just ask God. It's cariño. As a parent or as an elder brother or sister or as a friend, di ba parang how nice if your child will come, Mommy, Daddy, can you help me with this? Parang cute-cute, di ba? Oh, cute din tayo kay God. Parang, Dad, Papa God, God, help me with this. Jesus, help me with this. Even in the little things. The thing is, sometimes we wait until we got big trouble. That's when we go near Him. Ayun, eh, eh, paano na? Makikinig pa rin siya. <laughs> Pero it's nice to just be in communication with the Lord the whole day. Praying unceasingly. Diba little things, even in the traffic. I, I mentioned this yesterday in the group. This is a little thing, maybe for some, I, I don't know, parang maybe, maybe you fi find me even weird. It was raining and I was driving. And I knew that no one was going to open the gate for me at that time that I was going home. So I knew I was going to go down and open the gate myself. Oh my. So, malakas ang ulan, ah? hindi lang basta ulan ulan. I said, just as I ask God for parking, and when I ask for parking, I don't just ask for parking space. I ask, Lord, yung malaking space ha, para kaya kong mag-park. <laughs> Kasi pag maliit, baka hindi ko kaya pumasok dun sa parking. Ganun ako mag-pray kay God. Ganun ko siya kachika. So, anyway, so sabi ko, Lord, now already, like, on the street near our village, I was gonna, uh, that street almost to entering the gate. I said, Lord, please naman, <laughs> let the rain stop so that by the time I'm already in the street, of our gate of my house, Lord, wala nang ulan. I know, parang it's impossible, pero di ba nothing's impossible with you? <laughs> Ganun ako makipag-chika kay Lord, kala nyo ba? Pero pag may problema rin ako, Lord, bakit? Hindi ba lang? <laughs> Dramatic eh, no? So you know, tumigil talaga yung ulan as I was approaching our house. O oh, di ba, as in walang ulan. As in wala kahit shower, kahit drizzle. That's why be bold. Be bold in praying. It's okay. The worst thing that will happen is that He won't answer your prayer. <laughs> but be bold. Try lang. <laughs> Try lang. Because if it's time, if what you're asking for is something that He really wants to give you and it's time and you're ready for it, go. But if it's not yet time, then He will let you wait. And in the waiting comes many, many lessons. Do you know that while you're waiting, I singles. And not just for the singles, also waiting for something, an answer to God's prayer about work, about family. Alam nyo, in the waiting, so many things are being taught us. Ay, nako, minsan ang sakit-sakit. Pero parang, sige na, Lord, I submit to you. Lord, I just embrace whatever you're doing or whatever you want me to do because I also know if I don't embrace it, hmm, and you resist it, and you go the other way and disobey, what's gonna happen? It will take you long. 
ito. It will take you longer where you are. Paulit-ulit yan. Hanggang matutunan mo yung lesson that God wants you to learn. Eh, ayoko na. Lord, gusto ko mabilis na. <laughs> Di ba? So, ask for God's help. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Tra- so many people, when I wasn't really surrendered to the Lord yet, they would give me these verses, write me my birthday, Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Ano ba to? Di ko maintindihan. Paulit-ulit, I'm trying to understand it. You know, when the Spirit is not in you, you can't understand talaga anything. So you have to ask the Holy Spirit to help you understand, give you wisdom, help you in understanding what He's trying to say when you read the Word. So trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. And He will make your path straight. He will direct your paths. Oh, diba? Mga self-explanatory na yan. Hindi ko na kailangan explain The Spirit is moving. Holy Spirit, just move mightily today. Open our hearts, Lord. Yes. 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast your cares unto the Lord because He cares for you. Ako minsan ginaganyan ko pa eh. Lord, I cast all my cares, all my burdens, all my worries, my fears. Ganyan. Oo. Lalo na pag nasa beach. O, di ba? Lord, drama na naman. Lord, basta ayoko na to. Lord, sa'yo na. Ayoko na. Ayoko na. Hirap-hirap nitong buhay nito na ganito, na ganito. Yung problem, I give the problem to Him. I can't do it, Lord, so you do it. I guess you said to cast my cares unto you because you care for me. And because you care for me, you'll take care of it. Isaiah 41.10 So do not fear, for I am with you. Sarap, no? Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Eh, pag sinabi naman sa'yo, ba, parang, pag sinabi sa'yo ni Lord yan, Reassured, reassured, reassured ka. Then you just know and you know and you know. He's never gonna leave me. He's right here with me. Through the waters, through the fire. Through the fire. Ne, wag na lang. Hindi ko gift yun. Hindi talaga. Okay. And my favorite. One of my favorites. Philippians 4, 6, 7. Do not be anxious about anything. But in anything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So it says, do not be anxious about anything. Did it say, do not be anxious about some things? Do not be anxious about uh, like this, like this, or like that. Like... No, do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with Thanksgiving, present your request to God. So with Thanksgiving na, thank you na ka agad. Thank you, Lord. ba? Parang di kayo naniniwala. Natry nyo na ba? ba? Ganyan lang yan. Be bold. Yes. Sabi ko nga, pag hindi sinagot, edi, kulitin natin si God. Yun lang yun eh. ba? We know that story about the two women, ba? Kinulit ng kulit kulit si God. Eh, yung judge, ba? So, what did, the judge relented kahit na ayaw makinig. Hindi ko, wala kong time magkwento nun, yan, yan na lang. Ha? Number three, leave your concerns to God. Nagkamali ba ako? Hmm. Mali ako. Mali ako. Sorry. Mali ako ng verses, nagkaano ko. Well, ask God for help. I should have... Sorry. Anyway, John, John 14, 13... John chapter 14, verses 13 to 14. When you ask God for help, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. That's when you ask God for help, diba? And you know, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe you've received it, it is yours. But there is something that you need to do before there's a continuation of that verse. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe you've received it, it is yours. But if you have something against anybody or if somebody has something against you, you need to go to that person first and make amends, make it up, ba? Say sorry, ganyan. Para masagot yung prayers. I'm sorry, did I confuse you? I'm really sorry. But anyway, James 1, 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God so this is about when you ask God for help. I, I mixed up the verses. I'm sorry, I got confused. 
If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. So ask God for wisdom. He will give generously. He, he will not say, no, I only give you a little, or I only give you, I'll only give um, this person, I'll divide it among you. No, you ask him for wisdom, and he will give generously, even if you haven't been praying, or you haven't really been obeying. No, but that, whatever it is, whatever it is in your life, you need you trust that you can go to God. Diba? Kasi no one is perfect talaga. Hindi yung parang, I have to do this first before God will listen to me. Tama ba ako? Diba? You go before God. Anytime, anywhere, not by appointment. Wala. Walang appointment. Minsan magulang pa natin, may appointment, diba? Okay, in Psalm 12.2, Everyone lies to the neighbor, they flatter with their lips, but harbor deception in their hearts. No, this is not the one. Hmm. I'm sorry, anyway. Anyway, so that, that was my second point about asking God for help. And then um, the third point is leave your concerns to God. PowerPoint ko naloka ako. Okay. Sorry, did you get confused? Hi, thank you, Lord. God works things out for the good of those who love him are called to according to his purpose. He turns around with the devil meant for evil into good. <laughs> How oh, wonderful. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> At least naintindihan nyo kasi si Lord naman eh. Holy Spirit naman nagsasabi sa inyo, di ba? Ano lang ako? <laughs> Willing vessel. Minsan weak. Biglang. And the fourth one. So you have celebrate God's goodness, ask God for help, leave your concerns to God. Number four, meditate on the Word of God. Meditate on good things. We need to pray the word, declare the word. Okay? So in Joshua 1, 8, 9, even as a new believer, I, would, I just love, keep this book of the law always on your lips, meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Sobrang daming reassurance is going to be with us wherever we go. Yes. Another wonderful verse that's um, something that I really love also, Philippians 4, 8. The brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. There's such power in our thoughts and in our words. So we need to fill our thoughts with things that are pure and lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy, things that are right, things that are true. Facts are not always the truth of God. Right? Some people will say, oh, it's like this, it's like this, it's a known fact. No, it's research proofs. No. And what the doctor says sometimes, you know, you know, you just need to trust that God can turn around things for you. You believe that? I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't know... If you still are trusting God or already just doubting what He can do for you. But my dear brothers and sisters, there are things that we really can't do. Just we need to trust God with all of our hearts. I trust God in the timing in my life. I trust in God's timing. And I'm not going to strive, at least by His grace, not try to strive anymore or frustrate myself by trying to do things that I know only God can do. Diba? We always make pilit what we want. We always try to force the things of God to happen. But the things of God will happen in His perfect time. But we need to just be stay in faith, stay in hope, persevere. Perseverance builds character, character, hope. And what's important to Him is that He's building our character through the trials, through the challenges, through all the problems. God is just one, just after one thing. He's building our character, making us more and more like Christ. It's not easy. It's difficult. That's why we need kapatiran. We need. Ah, alis na ako, alis na. Sandali. Konti na lang. Landing na, landing. Da, 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 da. Alter call na tayo. Yeah. Anyway, wala ako, wala ako. Uh, when we're going through hardships, just remember. Remember God's faithfulness in your life. 
the times he answered your prayers, the time that he was walking with you, that you knew he was there. And that will strengthen you. That will strengthen us for the future. You know what? There's just one thing that I want to live for. I want to live for Christ. No matter what they say, I'm not perfect. I'm far from it. And there are many things that God is dealing with me until this very day. But I choose to be molded by God. He is my potter. I am the clay. I have to go through the heat, through the fire sometimes. But I want to come forth as pure, pure silver, pure gold. I want to be a really wonderful pot made by the Lord. That He will mold me to be the person that He wants me to be. And I want to share that with my children, my prayers of my children, and my children's children, and the generations after us. We love God. Obey Him. Honor Him. And serve Him all the days of our lives. I pray that mine will be a life lived for God. Because I know that a life lived for God leaves a lasting legacy. That's what I want to leave with my children. I just want, I want to leave with the world. That they know, and they know someone asked me before, how do you want to be remembered? I said, I want to be remembered as someone who really loved God and obeyed Him. So if you haven't obeyed God, and you know that there's certain areas in your life that are gray, I strongly urge you to submit yourself to God. Pastor, so with all the things that have happened in my life, I carefully give back all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, God bless you.